Good morning. It is Monday morning again. It is April 11th. It is Monday morning in Holy Week, which means for those of us in the Christian tradition, this is the week where we observe the events of Jesus's coming into Jerusalem and ultimately his death and resurrection. So if you are one who practices and observes these days, I will be praying for you and I hope that it's a meaningful experience this week for you. If you live in this area, uh, check my Facebook page, check out the pages for Iliopolis and Ionic Christian churches. There's a lot of opportunities there for you to worship and engage with this week's experiences. That said, I am Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of the Christian churches in Iliopolis in Niantic, Illinois. I'm also the founder and creator and founder and lead person, only person in Light Life and Love Ministries. I do have some help. I shouldn't say the only person. I do have some friends that help me out with that. But this is an outreach effort to connect with folks who may be spiritual but not religious or who have a faith background but don't have a church to connect with. And I'm the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast, where we encourage people to lean into the difficult situations and experiences of life so they can overcome them. And that's where I wanna to focus today, on struggles. Struggles can come in all shapes and sizes and varieties. We can struggle in business. We can struggle in life with relationships or just getting through day to day. And we can struggle in faith. There are so many ways that we can struggle. And there's a process that can help us through those times. And I have experienced this in 20 plus years in ministry, watching folks who struggle and seeing how they ultimately lean into that struggle and overcome it so that it's no longer a factor in their lives. And I wanna share that with you today, how you too can gain some comfort and some hope and inspiration for whatever struggles that you are facing. And you know, this isn't the only way to do it. This is a way that I've seen can help people. So I offer it to you. If you have questions, reach out to me if you have additional ideas, definitely put that in the comments. If you experience something helpful for you and I haven't mentioned it today, share it. We could all benefit from that. So make sure you add that in the comments. Um, but why do I always talk about leaning into it? Here's why. If we have a struggle, it's not going to go away on its own. It just isn't. It's going to be with us until we do lean into it, until we engage it, and until we overcome it. For instance, in my life, I always had a struggle growing up with finding my own voice and creating that, um, well, having that sense of assurance and confidence in claiming my voice and my opinion and my space in this world. And that's why I joined the National Guard when I was a junior in high school, because I needed that experience to help me have the confidence and the assurance that I could and did deserve a place and a voice and an opinion. And I did encourage, and that, that experience did provide me with what I was seeking. You know, another theme in my life, and I've shared this before, I'm actively working on this one right now. I was told in high school by a music teacher to never sing in front of other people again after a, a performance where my nerves got the best of me. And I tell you, that one has stuck with me a lot. And I have a profession where I am in front of people every week and we sing together and I'm the one in front singing. And I've had so much anxiety with that. I mean, it's really become an issue for me. Now, is that going to impact my life in a horrible way? No. There are a lot of other ways that, a lot of other significant ways to struggle that will have a profound and direct impact in life. This is a small one. My life could be fine living with this, but I've 
made a choice that I wanted out of my life. So I'm taking voice lessons and at some point I'm going to sing a solo in front of everybody on purpose and I'm going to live, I'm going to survive and it's going to be okay. And that is going to be out of my life. And that's the thing. I read something recently that is so true. You can make the difficult decision now and have an easier time of it afterwards. Or you can delay that difficult decision and struggle until you make it. And this is so true. If you've ever had a weight that you're carrying on your shoulders, if you've ever had a burden that just gets you down, it's going to be there and it's going to affect you until you make the difficult choice to address it and knock it out of your life. That if I have one purpose in this world, it's to support people in that process. If it's grief for you, if it's a worry that you're not enough, good enough, good enough husband, wife, partner, mother, father, sister, employee, that if you worry about finances, if you struggle with, if your kids are getting the foundation they need, if you struggle with any of these things, my whole purpose in life is to give you the support you need to overcome that. In my experience, the crucial beginning and the crucial foundation is to have an experience with a higher power. I know not everyone has had a good experience with church or religion when it comes to faith, but don't confuse those things with higher power. We're all flawed people. You know what? I've had some bad days at church too. Everybody has, but we come back because that's where God calls us to be in community with one another. And even in the flaws and mistakes, we can experience something so profound when we share our struggles together. But regardless, if you're not religious, we are all spiritual beings and being able to communicate with that higher power and to, um, to draw in the strength and the love and the, the, the power that comes from that is tremendous. So in the comments, I'm going to drop a link so that you can understand how you connect because we all do this differently. For some people sitting and praying is the ticket for others. That's not going to work for them. So I want you to have the tools that will serve you well. So in the comments, when this is done, I'm gonna drop a link so that you can find that for yourself. But let's talk about this process. How do we lean into and overcome the difficult experiences and circumstances in life? One, I'm gonna say this, stop complaining about it. It's not that people don't have compassion for you, but for your own sake, when you're in that mindset of complaining about it and feeling all the negative stuff, if you stay there, it's going to grow and it's going to get bigger. And if it's whatever it is, you're going to start seeing more of it and attracting it to you. So, change your mindset. Don't get stuck in the complaining part of how the struggle has you down. If you need to talk about it, find someone to talk about it. Contact me. I will listen to you with empathy and compassion. But I'm going to encourage you to not just live in the space where you complain about it because that's harming you and that's keeping you stuck there. So the first thing is to change your mindset into complaining about it, into telling yourself every day, I am overcoming this. So that's the first thing. And then the second, there are going to be seven of these, by the way. The second is to make the decision to lean into it. I'm not going to bury it, not going to ignore it because it's going to pop up. You can try to bury it. You can try to ignore it, but it's going to pop up when you're trying to sleep, when you've got some moments of peace or 
after you've eaten dinner and your digestive process isn't functioning real well, it's going to keep popping up. That's what that stuff is, is the unresolved stuff and our worries and our anxiety. So stop burying things. Lean into it. Decide you're going to knock it out of your life. Number three, focus on the outcome. In your mind, when you think about getting this out of your life, spend some time thinking about what your life is going to look like without this struggle, without this concern, without this fear or whatever it is. Spend some time focusing on that and let that be your affirmation each day. Let that be your inspiration that keeps you going through the difficult stuff. But have that positive influence in front of you. And number four, get honest with yourself. Get honest with yourself. Are, is the outcome you're working for, is that really what you need? Is it something you want? And there's nothing wrong with having dreams and desires. But don't confuse, you know, the universe isn't always like Amazon and it's not always like a vending machine, just go punch in what you want and expect it to come out. There's a whole lot of other factors involved in that. So if you're not immediately seeing the outcome you want, take some time and get honest with yourself and ask yourself these things. Am I getting what I need even if I'm not getting what I want? Number two do I have some growth that I need to do before I get there? This is a biggie and this is hard and it's frustrating. I get that. But sometimes to have the outcome that we want, we have to do some internal growth. We have to do some maturing and growing into, to have what we want. And then is there something better that's trying to come into my life? Maybe was I holding the bar too low? And is there a better situation, a better opportunity, a better outcome that's trying to come into my life and I am filling myself with this other stuff and not leaving room for it? So take the time to be honest with yourself. You know, stop complaining and change your mindset. Decide to lean into it. Not going to bury it and have a clear idea of what the outcome is, and then be honest with yourself. Number five, do not fall into the one-ups game. What do I mean by that? I mean, when you're talking to someone and they mention something they're struggling with, don't be the person that says, oh, you think that's hard? Well, I've been dealing with Again, that reverts us back into that mindset of we're stuck and that our pain is what defines us or our struggle is the negative aspects of it, our failure, what have you, is the thing that identifies us. Don't do that. You've changed your mindset. Don't fall back into it. When someone else is struggling, do this. Say, I understand. That must be so difficult for you. And then stop talking and just listen. You might learn something that will help you in yours. Okay, so number six. This is a tough one. This is a tough one, especially for the thinkers out there who like to live in their heads. Logic isn't always going to bring about the solution you want. So you may have a clear idea of what's needed, but there might be an emotional issue that's in your, in your way. For instance, uh, I had a friend in college who had an opportunity. They were, went to a job interview and were offered this position. They just had to go and do a few errands. It was very logical. They just had simple steps they needed to accomplish in order to accept this position. They had to complete a, a little certification. They were more than qualified to do that. It was just a matter of going to do it. 
they had to um, get a couple suits to wear to the office. And again, they had the means for that. And it was just a couple little things like that. But the problem was, it, well, the problem was not knowing what they needed to do because they knew, knew very clearly what they needed to do. But the problem was that when they had their, I forget what it was, but it was a very close relative to them who was going out to take a bar exam. And on the way, they had a car wreck that ended up in um, them losing their leg. My friend felt a lot of guilt about this because they had asked that beloved person in their life to go out and get them something on their way to their certification. So it, all of this is to say it's not always logic. Sometimes there's an emotional issue that is holding, the, uh, holding you up. So once this friend realized that that was what was coming up for him, that he could go and get licensed, he could go and get the things he needed wardrobe-wise to go into work, but it was this guilt that he had been carried, carrying around over this person in his life that was holding him back. So sometimes it's not always logic. It can be emotion. So find the real issue that is causing you distress. And finally, break it down. Break it down. Sometimes what we're struggling with is too big to handle all at once. So break it down into tiny things and don't underestimate small steps. Don't underestimate the power of little successes because little steps, little successes along the way lead to big victories. Keep track of those. At the end of the day, Write down your little successes. Keep track of the little things that you accomplished. And I guarantee you, if you keep doing that, if you keep making small strides and having these little successes, they're going to add up and you're going to be amazed at how far that you've come. So just a quick recap, seven ways to address the struggle. Change mindset. Get out of the complaining game. Number two, lean into it. Don't bury it, just tackle it head on. Number three, stay positive. Keep your focus on the outcome, not the struggle that you're having, but the outcome in your life. Dream about what your life is going to be like on the other side of this thing. Be realistic. Are you getting what you need instead of what you want? Are, do you have some growth that you need to do? in order to achieve this, that's gonna take a little time? Or is there something bigger that the universe wants to give you? So be realistic and honest with yourself. Number five, stay out of the one-up game. Don't stay in that mindset of complaint and letting your struggle identify you or your lack of overcoming identify you. Don't engage in those conversations. Number six, find the real issue that's keeping you stuck. Is it a lack of information? Go find the information. Is it an emotional issue? Heal the emotional issue. And you may need to consult someone else. You may need to consult an expert to get the information you need. You may need to consult a counselor to heal the emotional issue. And number seven, break it down. Do not, do not, devalue small steps and small progress. These things can add up to huge wins and huge gains. And I'm going to give you a bonus one. Communicate well. Communicate honestly with yourself, with others. Sometimes the struggles we have are a result of miscommunication and misunderstanding. So make sure you are clear in what you need, what you want, and what others are expecting and wanting and needing. And sometimes you can head the whole thing off at the pass. I hope this has been helpful. And if you would like support along the way, reach out to me. I would love to provide you that support. I get so much from watching others succeed in life. I love 
seeing people overcome all the yuck in their lives. So if you want a big cheerleader, if you want an encourager, if you want someone who can help you stay on track with these things, reach out. I would love to be that for you in your life. So again, I will put in the comments that spiritual personality tool, make sure you do that. It's going to help you so much to understand how you connect with a higher power. And that can get you a huge head start in whatever you're struggling with. I'm Melissa Ebkin. I wish you the best in this week, this holy week. I will be uh, busy uh, doing services and helping others engage with the holy. And I would like to help you do the same. So I hope this is a meaningful week for you. And I'll see you again next week. Bye for now.